Why are so many athletes so stiff? How can they be so great at what they're doing but not being able to sit in a squat? You know, I have found the key to having a flexible body. I can give you that key if you want it, but first you need to know why you are not already flexible. Otherwise, there's a good chance you will just return the key to me and say, no, it didn't fit. Why am I so stiff? You get stiff as you get older. That's the way it is. That's not the way it is. There is a cause of your stiffness. Remove the cause, you become flexible. Okay? So what does it mean to being flexible? You don't need to master the splits, those are skills. But you need to freaking be able to sit in a squat and you need to be able to touch your feet with your legs straight. That's flexibility. Stay with me, it's a good story to be told. Along my journeys around the globe, I have met the most amazing superhumans that can do the most extraordinary things with their bodies. Handstands, incredible strength, people who can do the most insane stunts and flips, runners who can run faster and longer than what should be possible, people who dedicated their lives to always push their limits just a little bit more. All these skills that without exceptions require insane amount of focus, dedication, patience, bravery, self-confidence, but most of all, time. Hell of a muscle up. And now working at an indoor parkour and trampoline place, I get to see people every day improve themselves, pushing themselves to become better and better. And the flips these kids can do on the trampolines these days are just incredible. The precision jumps the parkour guys can do are nothing but insane. For me, all those are skills really worth admiring. Some of these guys seem to know no limits at all for how great they can become at their passion. So how is it that I possess the one skill that so many of these guys and girls seem to believe is totally out of reach for them? Like I have something they can just never learn the fact that I have a flexible body. When I see these brilliant people in action, I make no try to hide how impressed I am by them and what they can do with their bodies. And I always tell them. So it kind of baffles me that people who pay the price of becoming great in their given passion can think that I have some kind of superpower being able to touch my feet with my legs straight or being able to sit in a comfortable squat. I see people break limits of what is possible to do with their body and simultaneously I see the same people getting stiffer and stiffer every day. And I am here to tell you that it doesn't have to be this way. So let me tell you why I am flexible and if you are not, let me tell you why I think that is. Being flexible is not a superhuman skill that is out of reach for anyone, no matter who you are. It is not even a skill. It was given to us for free at birth and if we would have played our cards right throughout our lives, we would never have lost it in the first place. But as it is for now, becoming flexible comes with a price you need to pay. It is not a super high price if you ask me, but it is a price. I gladly pay that price and most people likely don't. That is the difference. That's why I am flexible and most people are not. So the question is, if you knew the price, would you be willing to pay it? The price is not a great time consuming stretch routine. I don't even have one. And when I say that I don't have a stretching routine, I don't say that I don't stretch. I do. A lot. And I do think having a stretching routine is great. I could definitely use one. It could definitely speed up the process as well. 
I just don't happen to have one. And if I had one, it wouldn't be the main reason I am flexible. Being flexible for me is a habit. It's the small things I do all throughout the day without even thinking about it. A habit that I developed at will and that everybody can and probably should develop. But the main thing are the things I don't do, the price I am paying. So let me explain. I believe health is our natural state of being. Most of us are born pretty healthy, at least that's how it's supposed to be. And being flexible is definitely our natural state of being, or birthright. If you had an uncomplicated birth, you were most likely born pretty flexible. Squatting is a resting position for a one-year-old. The reason we become unhealthy as we grow older is because we do things that makes us so. And in the same way the reason we become stiff as we get older is because we do activities that makes us stiff, like sitting in a chair for six hours a day. In most people's life, there are probably way more things you need to stop doing to become healthy than there are things you need to start doing. In the same way, to regain the flexibility you had as a child, there are a lot of things you need to toss out of your life. Make sense? After that, there are many things you can do to speed up the process to become really flexible, but first, there are a few things that just gotta go. The biggest part of the price you need to pay are things you need to give up. Things that never served us but are so normal in our daily lives that hardly no one ever questions them. And there are two things that kills our flexibility more than anything. When I threw these two things out of my life, everything changed. I got so much of my flexibility for free simply because I stopped doing the things that makes us stiff in the first place. So these two things are... Can you guess what they are? You guessed right. One of them is this stupid thing. The chair. I mean look at this, we're so used to this stupid thing that we don't question that this is the reason why we are so stiff in the first place. Second one are these jeans. How are you ever going to be able to move? For me it's quite obvious that this pair of jeans doesn't make you a great mover, like you cannot even squat in them. Ugh. The share. Jeans. Again, let me explain. The traditional share position is the biggest bad guy for our natural flexible body. It slowly kills our flexibility. And we start at a really early age to spend hours and hours every day sitting in this unnatural position. And as a result, most people have lost their ability to sit in a comfortable squat at the age of 12, sometimes even at the age of 8. I frequently have the groups of kids that I am coaching sit in a squat and most of the kids between the age 9 to 12 struggle with it while pretty much all of the 4 to 8 year kids squat perfectly fine, often without even thinking about it. And the grown-ups have usually forgotten they ever had the ability to squat or to touch their feet standing up. And back problems, tight hamstrings and short calf muscles are standard for grown-ups. You don't need to know the exact science behind why the share is so harmful for a body. Just throw it out of your life and watch what happens with your body. And jeans, or stiff uncomfortable clothing in general, are the reason we cannot implement regularly stretching in our daily lives. We cannot even squat in jeans, let alone stretch. So what do we do? We find the closest bench or chair to sit down. We're too stiff to do anything else. The price I am paying to be flexible is I never sit in a chair position. I do sit in chairs on rare occasions, but almost never in a traditional chair position. I squat in the chairs, or sit with one leg up on the seat, or both legs on the table. But in general, I sit on the ground, I sit on the floor. In the beginning, I couldn't squat comfortably for more than 30 seconds, but I didn't let that stop me. I sit in any position on the floor, I just stay away from the chair. It doesn't matter how you sit as long as you avoid the traditional chair position. I practiced the squat until it was in my nature. And when you never sit in chairs, 
You have plenty of time to practice the squat, believe me. The second part of the price I am paying. I never wear clothes that I cannot easily squat in or stretch in. When I am always dressed for stretching, I can implement stretching in everything I do. I develop the habit of making use of every dead minute during the day for some easy stretches. Combining sitting activities with some stretches, such as squatting while working on the computer and so on. Stretching is uncomfortable for the body and most of the time we don't feel like doing it so I figured if I make it a habit I will stretch without even knowing it. Habits are habits, it doesn't matter if we like them or not, whether they serve us or not, when it's a habit it sticks with us, whether we like it or not. It was hard in the beginning and people thought I was crazy, squatting everywhere. At the lunch break, at work I was squatting in the chair or I sat down on the floor. People thought I lost it. I took every opportunity I got to do some stretches. If I got some spare minutes, like waiting for the bus, standing in the line at the supermarket, I did some stretches. I implemented squatting and stretching in my daily life until it was second nature to me, until I didn't even think of that I was doing it. And no wonder, as a result, I became super flexible. And thirdly, to be able to do these first two things that I mentioned, I had to let go of the fear of what other people may think of me when they see me. Because people will look at you when you squat at the bus stop, when you sit on the floor inside a train practicing your middle split. You just have to stop caring what they may say or think when they see you. People do look. They even stare when somebody does anything that is outside of their predictable everyday life. Let them look. I took it even further, now I practice handstands while waiting for the bus, in the line of the supermarket and so on. Every day is filled with opportunities to practice our greatness. And when asked how much time I do dedicate every day for stretching, my answer is, I don't know. I dedicate almost no time for stretching and yet I do it all the time. Making the whole thing a habit is the key. I don't want you to develop a fear that the chair is so bad that you can never sit in it. It is not a problem for me to sit in a chair once in a while. I do it when I drive a car and when I play the piano. It is just that the habit in me now is so deeply rooted that if you put me in a chair and then distract me with something, I can assure you, within short, I will sit in a squat in the chair without me even knowing it. I do understand that people most likely think I'm a weirdo when they see me. This is the price I gladly pay to be flexible. And trust me, it is worth it. It is awesome to be mobile. It is awesome to have control of your muscles. But everybody seems to be too busy to dedicate any time for stretching or becoming flexible. But with this way, you don't even have to dedicate time. It's more about using the time you already have. Becoming flexible, unlike most other physical activities, doesn't require much skill, or actually no skill at all. You don't need to be fit or in good shape, you don't need to be brave, you don't need any money, you don't need anything. You do, however, need to pay the price. And the price of being flexible is far lower than the price of becoming a great runner, a gymnast, or a great football player, and so on. Most people already know where to start, just do the stretches. But of course, to know what we need to do, and even know how to do it, is never a guarantee that we will do it. What most people don't know, however, is what is making us so stiff in the first place. And that if we would simply remove the cause, it would become so much easier. Most people probably believe that it's just the way it is. We become stiff when we grow up. That is the whole point of this video, to create awareness that you do have a saying in this. You're not doomed to live in a stiff body just because you didn't choose gymnastics for a career. Everyone can improve their flexibility drastically, pretty fast. But I hope you understand that it doesn't happen overnight. Nothing great does. How long it will take depends of course on where you are now. But the results will come, that is for sure. In my case, I was not super stiff to begin with. I just never liked to sit still. And I always done some stretches after workouts and runs, so I was never in that bad condition. But 
Where I was three years ago and where I am now is beyond compare. I threw away my last pair of jeans back in 2013, I stopped sitting in chairs late 2015, and what also helped was I stopped using shoes with a drop sole in the summer of 2015. Shoes with a higher heel have a tendency to shorten our calf muscles, which makes it harder for us to squat. And I can really hear how your inner voice is screaming out, no, 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 I don't want to become like that weirdo. And that's fine, who wants to give up the share and jeans just to become flexible? I did, definitely. So if being stiff is not a problem at all for you and you don't care for change at all, fine, go on with your life. This video is not for you. This video is for athletes who have become great in what they do, but for some reason they totally neglect their, their flexibility. And I think the reason they neglect their flexibility is because they think it's out of reach for them. Like it's something they cannot learn. And it's not true. At least I don't think it's true. Now, there are, of course, a lot of other things that plays a big role when it comes to how flexible you are, like your shoulder mobility. I think it's fair to assume that the reason people lack shoulder mobility is because we nowadays spend a lot of time on the computer like this and it makes you stiff. I developed the habit some time ago to always do this with my shoulders, like my arms behind my back. And I think that helps a lot with your shoulder mobility because now my sh shoulders are really flexible. And as I said earlier in the video, being flexible for me is not so much about how good you are at the splits, it's more like how mobile you are, your mobility, how much you can move and feel like you're in charge of your body. If you are one of those great athletes who feel like you're mastered your passion, but you feel like you're getting stiffer and stiffer by the day, I gladly help you in any way I can. I'm always here to serve. And I really believe I can help you with your mobility and flexibility. Let me know in the comments down below because I know exactly why I am this flexible and I know exactly why I am not more flexible. The concept is simple. Actually doing it might not be as easy, but I know what to do. I know what needs to be done and I gladly help you. Thank you for watching.